Nope, it's not clickbait. I did talk a client of mine into letting me use my iPhone on a recent video shoot. Learn how to turn your smartphone into a professional quality video camera. Be sure to check out our mobile filmmaking courses. And also don't forget, we have a companion filmmaking podcast. Links are in the description. Now I understand shooting on a phone on a professional gig isn't really new. As a matter of fact, I've done it quite a bit myself in the past, especially as a B camera. But what is new is the quality we can get now. It really started with the 12 Pro Max, the iPhone 12 Pro Max and its 10-bit video. And now it's continued with the 13 Pro Max or the 13 Pro and the ability to shoot ProRes video. So that was my pitch. I'll shoot ProRes 422 on my phone. And they said, cool. This project was shooting gimbal footage of a truck stop. Don't ever let anyone tell you that filmmaking isn't glamorous, okay? Now, if you follow my channel for a while, you know that I like to use phones on gimbals and often alongside larger professional cameras even like a RED camera. The main reason being that phones are much lighter and easier to rig up and use. And typically speaking, when you're using a gimbal, you're shooting a wider shot. And so you're less likely to notice the difference between the two cameras as depth of field is often the biggest giveaway. Although on this job, the phone was the main camera. And so I didn't have to worry about matching to other traditional professional cameras. Although we did have a drone and shot with it some as well. I shot using the iPhone 13 Pro Max on a Fiutech G6 Max gimbal. And I put the phone in a B-Script Pro in the half cage configuration so I could then use the Moment 67 millimeter filter mount and their three to five stop variable ND filter. I also had to add a small counterweight to help balance the setup because it is top heavy. And lastly, I used the Filmic Pro app and shot with the ProRes video codec. My job was to get coverage of the various activities at the truck stop, including the various signage throughout. The footage will be used as B-roll in a variety of different ways for corporate and commercial projects. Overall, the shoot went pretty well, but didn't go perfectly. I did have some trouble with the gimbal vibrating in certain positions, and so I had to rebalance it a couple times on location. The weight of the setup is no problem for this gimbal, but it is top heavy. And so if you're using this type of rig, be careful with that and make sure you're perfectly balanced when panning or tilting too. The other thing that's really out of our control right now is I did encounter Apple's dreaded dynamic tone mapping. If you don't know what tone mapping is, it's basically the iPhone trying to auto adjust the dynamic range or kind of the exposure through computational imaging, even when your settings are locked. And that's the key point, everything was locked. This is fine when you're shooting static photos, but for motion video, it can be really bad. 
Now, if you know about it going in, you can avoid it to some degree, mainly by not shooting in high contrast scenes where objects are moving across the frame. But right now, there is also a bug that only happens when shooting with the ultra wide lens. That is that the white balance subtly shifts too. And that's really not good. Fortunately, it happens slowly enough that you can fix this in post-production with some color correction. But this is a pretty big issue and I really hope Apple fixes it soon. And by the way, they are aware of it along with Filmic Pro. So right now I would probably pause on using the ultra wide lens on anything that's super important. One last thing is regarding the variable ND filter. And this applies to using phones in general, not just the 13 Pro Max. ND is very important, especially using a phone to get the ideal motion blur. Otherwise you'll have staccato looking footage and it just doesn't look professional. That's one of the biggest giveaways that you're shooting on a phone is not using ND. So if you watch my channel regularly, we all know that. But one thing that can happen, especially using a variable ND, you have it cranked all the way down because you're shooting in bright light. But then if you shoot in shadow areas, the phone will auto ISO up when you reset the exposure and you won't realize it, especially doing a run and gun shoot and you'll underexpose the shadows and create noise and artifacts. So in those situations, you'd want to lessen the ND. The overall point here, or really a warning, is to always pay attention to your ISO, even when shooting outside in bright light. You wanna keep that ISO low. Now understand, issues happen on every shoot. That's one reason you shoot a lot. You shoot a lot of B-roll. You'll often have shots out of focus or overexposed, or you might have a drone in a shot. So these kind of things happen, and it's really not out of the ordinary. But regarding the phone, you do really need to pay attention to the ISO. And then of course the dynamic tone mapping, which we hope one day will be resolved. So the issues aside, overall the footage worked out well. I was happy and so was the client. I really think using the later model phones, you can now get professional quality results and mix and match that footage with other professional cameras. Or the phone itself can stand alone on its own. It really just depends on what you're doing. Now as long as that check clears from my client, this will end up being a pretty great gig.